वीडियो सुने We 
willing to hear your loving kindness. Because they are better if I do not hear that you love me, I might go out and walk in defeat. I might think that you are not there for me because of what I may face during the day. If you do not tell me, if I do not hear your loving kindness early in the morning, if I go out, I may believe that you are not there for me because of the battles that I may encounter. But this morning, I want to tell somebody that God loves us. Amen. Amen. God and I. He wants to tell us every morning that he loves us. Every day when we arrive, the enemy is standing us at the door, trying to make you and I believe that God does not love us. But this morning, we just want to thank God for his loving kindness. We want to declare his majesty. We say, Father, we thank you for your love. This morning, divine Christian church, we say thank you. We declare that you are worthy, you are invisible, you are our miracle worker, our unchangeable changer.
You and I will praise the Lord. You and I will praise the Lord. You and I, you and I, you and I will praise the Lord. You and I will praise the Lord. Go to your neighbor. I wish them a happy
to give us the announcement, please. Shall we welcome Sister Felicia for the announcement? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Shall we give a clap offering to the King of Kings? Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. You're all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Our announcement goes like this. We have a normal Sunday service. We start from um, it starts from 10 a.m. to 12.30 every Sunday. And then we also have other services in the week. We have um, um, the Daily Revival Fellowship, which happens every day. It starts from 8 to 9 p.m. online. It happens every day from 8 to 9 p.m. And then um, we also have our evangelism, which actually kicked off yesterday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. We had a wonderful time yesterday. So I want to use this um, opportunity to encourage anyone in the house to please be part of this um, um, evangelism event. And we'll pray that the Lord will use it to revive his church and go his church. So we do it every Saturday in the week. Our pastor has put everyone in different groups. So please try and find out and know the group um, that you are on and know the days that um, you go. So every, every group goes every Saturday, the one Saturday in the month. So try and find out the group that you belong to and uh, be part of this event. It happens every Saturday. Every Saturday, it starts from 1 to 3.30 p.m. Praise the Lord. And then, um, yes, and that's, that's just about what we have right now. Uh, just try and make sure to be part of that um, um, evangelism. It's really, really important that we go out there and propagate the gospel as our Lord Jesus Christ encourages us to. And for more details, you can contact um, 0790 Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. And I'll hand over to the MC. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are a living church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to take our Bible reading this morning. And our Bible reading this morning is taken from Joshua chapter 1 from verse 19. And I read from verse 9, sorry. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. I take it again. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. This, as we all know, the account of this, this is when Joshua had taken over from Moses, I believe, and God was encouraging him. We have entered into the year 2023. Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage us that the Lord is saying that it doesn't matter what is facing us, what we are going through, we should only be encouraged. Amen. Amen. We should be encouraged and not be dismayed, irrespective of what is going around us, even what we have started the year with. The Lord is saying that we should be strong and we should be courageous and we should go in that strength this year, wherever we go, whatever battles that we face, whatever wars that we face, we should go out knowing that we are more than victorious. Because in that same verse, it says that, for he has given us what? The place wherever the soles of our feet will tread, there he has given us. Amen. So 2023, I want to encourage us as we go out, it doesn't matter. He said that we should wish all we need to do is to be strong and should be, we should be courageous in the face of adversity and certainty. And when he told Joshua, you and I know that Joshua accomplished much. Amen. He took on that word and he did mighty things. He was courageous. He took territories, and that is what I want to encourage us. 2023, God is doing a new thing. Amen. We will see it. All we need to do is to be courageous. Amen. Amen. Is to trust God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Who is excited in the house? Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Praise the 
Lord. Is our dear sister ready for the hymn? Sister Judith. Amen. Amen. Whilst our dear sister is ready, is preparing for the hymn. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy.
thank you, our dear sister Judith. God bless you. Without taking much of our time, we'd like to um, call on Uncle Tinde to give us today's um, testimonies. Amen. Testimony time. Testimony time. First of all, I'll start by testifying in front of the Lord, by thanking Him for all the things He's done in my life. I thank Him for a great weekend as well. I thank Him for a great evangelism as well for the church. I thank Him for providing. And let me just sing a song first. Um, it says, Onward Christian soldiers Marching on to war With the blood of Jesus Going on before Christ the royal master In the gate to fall Forward on to battle See the neighbors go Onward Christian soldiers Marching on to war With the blood of Jesus Jesus going on before. Praise the Lord. Amen. Onward, Christian soldiers. We are all Christian soldiers marching on to war. Praise the Lord. And it's good for us as Christians. We always fight against war, against enemies. Always good when we are all together. How pleasant is it for the brethren to be together? So I thank the Lord, Father Lord, for the first week of our evangelism, which has kicked up very well. Amen. And I thank him for, we, we were able to, they were able to get two people yesterday, Amen. which is good. But I pray we are going to continue to win more souls. Amen. Jesus Christ said, I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Fishers of men is not only just to go and catch some fish in the water, but it's to catch some more people. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I pray the Lord will continue to help us. Help the church to move into that direction for 2023. I will see there will be new lives in what we are doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I also thank you for our family, my children, my wife, jobs wise, and probably things that are coming ahead of us for 2023. I will pray that the Lord will continue to protect us in everything we are doing in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. I also thank the little girl there, um, Tabitha. She was on yesterday for evangelism. What a very good um, trip for her, as young as she is. She, uh, her, she went to give some leaflets out. And when she gave some leaflets out, they were able to give her two lollipops in one of the barber shops she went to. <laughs> so that was a bit good of encouragement for her, as young as she is, to start doing the work of God. So when she gets older, she will be rewarded in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any more testimonies in the house, please? Yes, Sister Julie. Praise the Lord. If I give my testimony, I would like to sing this song. Even when I fall young, you still hold my hand. Lover of my soul, you know they break my heart. I sing about your goodness, I sing about your grace. Now you did bust my brain every night and day. Daddy, you were a pampa, Daddy, you were a bless. Forever you're my father, now you did give me rest. When I look around, I see your faithfulness. I bow down on my knees, cause now you will be the best. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to thank God for life, for the gift of life. Um, we waking up this morning, it's not by our own, um, it's not by our own power. We ask some people around us, like what some people will be saying, there is no God. But yet, when when they wake up in the morning, they still they are still breathing. When we ask them who woke you up this morning, they will say it's technology. 
some of them will say there is no God. Yet, if there is an accident or if something is about to happen, they will shout Jesus. So who are they shouting for if there is no God? So I want to thank God for the gift of life. Hallelujah. And uh, the other one is I want to thank God for, because there was, uh, this week my mom was, so she was just, because uh, when she, when something started occurring to her mind, she was start saying, ah, because she's the kind of person that, if something happens, she'll start saying, proclaiming negative. And I said, no, don't say that. She said that she has not heard from this, her daughter, since few weeks now. Say, is she okay? Is she, because my time, my sister used to come online. She's in Nigeria. So I was telling her, no, don't say that. Just say positive. Just believe she's okay. So we kept calling her like the other one was not going through. So I called her, and that was around 11, which is around 12 in Nigeria. So I told her, to just leave her baby for the fact her phone is shrinking, she's okay. So in the morning, I called her. I asked her, at this one, you're not coming online. Nobody's hearing from you. She said that they attacked her place where she was living. So they attacked her. I said, but hope you're okay. She said, yes, it's just a high phone that, that got spoiled out. But she's okay. She's using just a small phone and she cannot be able to come online. So I called my mom. She was there saying, hey, Shai, I told you that when I have this feeling, this strong feeling, something is wrong. But I told her, nothing is wrong with her daughter. It just her phone. But I just want to thank God for the God who saw her truth. She didn't have any any injury. It's just that her, that her phone that got broken. So I just want to thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joey. Judy. May the Lord continue to protect you and your family. I will pray the Lord will cover you all with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any more testimonies in the house, please? No testimonies. Okay, I'll close down with our scripture here from our couple's night. It's a couple's night scripture which I have stolen. So please listen to it. I like that scripture. I was reading through the couple's night's poster and I saw this scripture on it. It's taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verse nine to 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one be one alone? Though one may be overpowered, but one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and therefore cord not quickly or a cord is not easily broken. So it's a very, very good, powerful scripture here that two are better than one. And as Christians, it's best for us to always be together as one. We thank the Lord today for this wonderful testimony service. We pray the Lord will continue to protect us and guide us. And we pray that all our testimonies will be covered with the blood of Jesus. And we'll continue to act together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for all the testimonies. We give glory to God in Jesus' name. And Katika, thank you. I'm so, I'm so blessed that you took time to read the flyer. Amen. God bless you. It means that something good is happening. Amen. 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 And I pray that all of us will take the time to read the couple's night flyer. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing. It is a blessing. So I believe that all the couples in the house will shall be seeing you and your um, life partners on the 18th of February 2023. Amen. 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 We are still collecting contribution. So if you want to con contribute in any way, please see the events committee or pastor if you're more comfortable that way. Amen. Amen. Without taking much of our time, we'd like to welcome our dear mommy. Mommy Joy, as we put our hands together and clap for her and also for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we give a clap of him? As though we live in the church that we are alive.
Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. It's a privilege and it's an honor to be once again in the house of God. Has God been good to you? He has been good to me. I'm alive. I can breathe. I can jump. I can walk. I can talk. I can dance. I can give glory to whom glory is to God. The Alpha and the Finisher of my faith. The one that I believe in. For there is no other God but you.
There is a direct ministration from the Lord to everyone here. If you can only open up your eyes, open up your ears. Some of us are at the point where we are asking, oh God, what next should I do? You seem to be saying, what next, oh God? Crossroad. Or just 
a new relationship with him. I have not got power to minister, but the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are here. Some of us will feel some inner joy. You can explain what that joy, but somehow you just feel that the tomorrow is okay. Would you put fast, put out your faith, put out your heart? Are you looking out to Jesus? The author and the finisher of our faith. When we come to his presence, he has invited us. His invitation comes with encounter. The bar you serpent and take authority over you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this is not a dwelling place for you. I command you, Spiton. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as you disappear, I crush you to pieces and grind you to powder. Never return anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you will hear a voice from behind you say, This is the way. Begin to walk now in it. After the service, every anxiety and fear will disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pressure and tension. Some of us will feel like we are pressure inside you feel like something is being pressed and that pressure is being lifted up now. Because I cannot do it but we have Jesus and the Holy Spirit who can relieve. All kinds of fear. Fear about what? Fear about health. Fear about our tomorrow. Fear about our marriage, fear about our children, fear about our career, fear about our business. You are safe in his hands. You are safe in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, this one that is crying out and asking, for help. Lord, let there be something remarkable right now to comfort them. Let them, it's not just the feeling, let it be so beyond doubt that you have come with your want and that you have come with your comfort. We thank you, Lord. Not my will, Lord. But your will be done. Father, uh, pour oil on marriages. Pour fresh oil upon marriages, Lord. Restore marriages. Let families be touched right now, my Lord. Those ones that are crying in secret, some of the things they can't even share outside. You that know it and see it in secret. Wipe away those tears, Lord. Take away those sorrows, my Father. Because you have power. And you're able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever imagine or think about. Lord, let them receive it now. Let mercy and grace speak. Let your compassion stand for us. We thank you. The Lord keep you. Preserve you. Whatever he has done for you, it remains permanent in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. God bless you, those of us at church. You may take your seat.
Let's give Jesus a big round of applause for our boy. A round of applause belongs to Jesus. So Jesus deserves better applause. Hallelujah. So grateful for the opportunity to come again. Thank you so much, everyone who have come here today. We don't take it for granted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. A bit of volume, if you don't mind, it's coming now. Okay, volume, sir, please. Amen. Brian, help me with my laptop, please. It's right there, sir. So we want to continue teaching on the series of teachings we started from Monday. God bless you, man. Is that the second time of our sin? You were here. Is that the first time? Second time. Second time around. Come on, let's give Jesus a good one. Today is so important, very, very, very important. Please follow with me now. From Monday, we started treating this topic that we simply entitled Jesus Christ, the foundation. Yeah, thank you. Jesus Christ, the foundation. And now we've done part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. And today's part seven. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. So what we're going to try and do today is to summarize everything we've done so far and conclude. Praise God. Jesus Christ, the foundation. He is the ultimate. Ah, Bala do Shata, Lidus of Pandela was with Tayanawa. And Bradus Kapa, Lidus Kaprokona de Sotoya. We thank you, mighty Redeemer, in the name of Jesus. So we did benefit of a solid foundation that was part A yesterday. Today we want to do benefits of a solid foundation in Christ. You can call today part B. And what we can describe as the greatest benefit of having a solid foundation is an ability to make it to heaven with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is the obvious scripture, what shall it profit a man? If he was to gain the whole world, but loses his soul. Foundation is so important. In the occult world, in the kingdom of darkness, they take foundation very seriously. That is why we will see that you go to a village, there is a family shrine. And that family shrine is a foundation. For the family. In other words, everybody that is born into that family by default, by just by their lineage from that family, have some type of spiritual allegiance to that shrine. So that shrine becomes a foundation that exists in that family. That is why sometimes if you are somebody that God uses to minister deliverance, you can see a common pattern in families. It's nothing to do with the believer, it's nothing to do with the people 
you are ministering deliverance to, it's not their fault. It's just that there is a foundation, and that foundation, first, because there is not a biological connection. That biological connection results in spiritual connection. So that foundation is there. And you see a pattern, if by the mercy of God, God gives you the privilege of being able to minister deliverance to families, some families. So the reason that pattern is there we know is because there is a family foundation. That is in a negative sense. But of course we have the more positive side of things. That positive side of things is to lay foundation in Christ. There is no other foundation that can be laid apart from that which has been laid by the man Christ Jesus. If the foundation is properly laid, then we can lay everything on top. Houses, cars, careers, every other thing can be put on top of it. Yesterday we were reading Luke chapter 5, there about the parable of the soul. And Jesus said, described riches in terms of wickedness. He said the wickedness of riches. So riches becomes wickedness if it is laid on a worldly foundation. Riches are wicked things. Wealth is terrible. It can be around on people who own the world. And so Jesus describes worlds that is not built upon a solid Jesus foundation as worlds uh, wickedness of riches. Because we don't say that wealth is bad. But it is not built on the solid foundation, it can be around and become wickedness. That is why you see some people and normal people, easy people, and all of a sudden God makes them uh, maybe a celebrity football star, maybe a top boxer, maybe a political leader, or maybe a king in the land. All of a sudden they turn around. They become lions and tigers. You don't want to blame them too much because perhaps their success, as it were, has been built on a foundation, a wobbly foundation. But today we want to talk about the last benefit of a solid foundation. Without foundation in Christ, the greatest benefit of salvation cannot be realized. Hallelujah. Amen. What is the greatest benefit of salvation? Who can tell us? What is the greatest benefit if you achieve it as a believer? What is the greatest benefit? Huh? Eternal life. life. There are scholars here. Why? The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he was to gain the whole world but loses his soul? Eternal life is the greatest benefit. But we cannot get this greatest benefit unless our foundation is good. Hallelujah. Our foundation has to be what? Good. And how do we get our salvation to be good? Matthew chapter 4. Quickly now, let's take a couple of scriptures. How do we get our foundation to be good? Matthew. Chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 17. Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 4. Verses 1 to 17. 
Then was Jesus led up. And by the way, those of us who haven't got a Bible, we have one that we can spare you uh, for you to use for the service. After the service, you can also leave it behind so that other people who may not have Bible or they forget their Bible, they come next time, they can have the Bible to use. So if you haven't got the Bible, I think there are a couple of Bibles here and there that we deliberately put in place so that people can have Bible to use. So if you haven't got any Bible, raise your hands, we can give you one. But after the service, please kindly leave it behind for us. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. Reading from verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be turned, be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take him, taketh him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give to thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee and set up. For what it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil liberated him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into the prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali that it might be fulfilled that was, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people we sat in darkness saw light to them, and the regions of the edge sprung up. Look at verse 17, which is a very important place. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say what? Let's put the last verse together. Repent, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is 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 Thank you. So you see two things from this verse of scriptures that we have read. Matthew chapter 1 to verse 17. From verse 1 going up to verse 12 to think there about you see that the foundation of Jesus was tempted, was tested. Uh, bow worship before me, and I'll give you all the splendor, splendor in quotes. In other words, the devil wanted to test Jesus' foundation. Is Jesus mechanical? Is Jesus worldly? 
or is Jesus spiritual? Bow before me. The devil said to Jesus, and he's going to give him everything. Power, honor, glory. But all the time that the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus had a good foundation. The foundation that Jesus had helped him to overcome. In our world today, I don't need to mention that so many people have sold their souls to the devil. Because they want fame, because they want money, and some people they have, have sold their soul to the devil because they are afraid. Some people think that they want the devil to protect them. How can you ask the tiger to protect you? Every day the tiger gets hungry, he will eat the person up. And that is why the protection of the devil does not go far. Because the first time they ask you to bring the chicken, or maybe they start with lizard, okay. and then they pull you out the lizard. <laughs> so I yeah, bring, bring chicken, and you are pulling in more, more, more. Okay, well, this juju now is very hungry today. Which kind of juju is hungry like that? Oh, yeah, bring goat instead of chicken. And then you take the chicken there. After some time, they say, this juju, you know, this juju is very, very, they eat too much. Let's give the juju a cow today. And from there, one cow becomes seven cows. And from there, they said, this juju, ah, I said, this year, this juju said, he doesn't want cows anymore. He wants a higher existence. You know what I mean? He wants the highest of what existence on the earth. What is the highest of existence on the earth? But he started with maybe a chicken. And maybe a bottle of gin. And so sometimes I say, bring cigarettes. I say, which kind do you do this most cigarettes? <laughs> we hear all kinds of things which rise. So bring some Morris or whatever it is. Do you do the most cigarettes? <laughs> all these dating doctors, they have a lot of. Where did the person go? The dating doctor would like the cigarettes cross the neck like that. Oh, you foolish man. <laughs> Why did you cast most cigarettes? And then they said, now the ones human. Ah, do you know that the Bible told us in the book of Deuteronomy that even if we kill an animal in the Old Testament, that was how serious God looked due blood. If we kill an animal and eat an animal with the blood, it becomes murder. In the Old Testament dispensation. That is how serious God values blood. To the point that if somebody kills, even if it is a mosquito, a mosquito has blood, anything that has blood, I will kill it, and it was killed and eaten, God said at that point it becomes murder. He said the way somebody can escape from being a murderer when they want to eat animal is to slaughter the neck of the animal and let the blood flow out. So when the blood flows out, we are no longer accountable for the blood. It doesn't become murder anymore. That is how serious God views blood. Because blood is where the spirit is. And the spirit is what? Every human being has what? The spirit of God. So when people shed blood, they are effectively trying to kill many God in what? God said in Psalm uh, 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 82 verses, know ye not that ye are God. So anybody that kills a human being kills a baby God. That was why God took it so seriously. And said so that anybody that eats animal with blood, even animal, is considered a murderer. How much more when people begin to shed innocent blood? But let's leave it there. So here Jesus has finished 
is 40 days and 40 nights fast. And the, the devil came so many ways to test his foundation. Jesus had a solid foundation, we know. And so he survived. And, but then Jesus understood the importance of us being like him. Jesus understood the importance of us having the same uh, spiritual status he had while he was on earth. Somebody said that blasphemy is not. Because in John chapter 17, verse 22, Gospel of John chapter 17, verse 22, Jesus said the same glory that God has given him, he has given us the same glory. And so Jesus knew that what made him operate in that glory is absolute holiness. And so he told us in John chapter 14, verse 12, he said the same work he did, we will do. How many of us want to do the kind of work that Jesus did? How many of us would like God to use us to heal? How many of us would like God to use us to deliver people? Work miracles. John 14 and verse 12. If you believe in me, the same work I did, you will do an even greater work. Why? Because I go to my Father. And so Jesus, in other words, wants us to take the same, have the same status he had while he was man on earth. We know we, can, we cannot be the spiritual Jesus. The faith Jesus is unique. But the Jesus that walked this earth wants us to carry the same status he had while he was on earth. We know there are two types of Jesus. Isn't there? there are two dimensions of Jesus. The physical Jesus, historical Jesus, who had Mary as uh, his biological mother. The one that had uh, 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 lineages with Israel. And then the faith Jesus, who was or who is God. So Jesus wants us to have the same status as the historical Jesus had while he was on earth. And so he gave us authority. He said the same work he did, you and I can do. And then he said, why? So he told us why in John chapter 17, verse 22, he said, because the glory that God has given to him, he has given it to us so that we can function the way he functioned while he was on earth. But then, with every um, uh, uh, authority that give, Jesus gives to us, comes what? Responsibility. We can't accept the authority without accepting the responsibility. If we do that, it will look like we're trying to eat our cake and have it at the same time. That is magic. And God does not do magic. Magicians can come and see, eat their cake as they have it. But they haven't really eaten it. They're just hypnotizing and bombarding people. So Jesus said, I'd like us to do what he has done. But then also, he wants to show us why he was able to do it. And then he gave us the secret again. Here in Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 17. Repentance. Repentance means getting to the point where we want to live absolutely 100% holy for the Lord. Why is it so important to have that aspiration? Because it has to be 100% holiness if we have to make it to the kingdom of God. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 27, Revelations chapter 21 and verse 27. That in Revelation chapter 21, are we going to come with me now and ask us to do so? In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 27, Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. 
and they shall in no wise enter into it. Anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb's book of life is pure, highly 100% consecrated. And the Bible is not missing word about the type of people that their names will go there. It said, Those that defile it, who are the people that defile it? The people that, for example, they hear the word of God and they become indifferent to the word of God. The people that are defensive when they hear the word of God instead of repenting when they hear the word of God. Nothing that defiles will go into the book of life because the book of life is what? 100% holy. 100% consecrated. If you put somebody's name that is defiled, the whole book will be what? Defiled. The Bible says a little lump, something in the lump, you know, spoils the whole lump. And so that is where God wants us to have the right foundation. We can't talk about, start even thinking about 100% consecration without getting the foundation right. No proper concentration, uh, foundation, no 100% concentration. It can happen. Hunger for consecration starts with a good foundation. When our foundation becomes good, what our priorities become changes. It is a good foundation that begins to point us to the right spiritual priorities. And so it is your responsibility, it is my responsibility to say, well, I understand that I need a solid foundation. Once that solid foundation is in place, the next thing we need to begin to think about, it comes naturally. We want to, from there, begin to please the Lord. When the foundation becomes right, we are willing to suffer inconvenience because of the gospel. When the, God bless you, man. When the foundation becomes right, like Jesus, the devil came several multiple times, at least three times to Jesus. When we get the foundation right, we may have loopholes. But just because our roots is in Christ, it becomes easy for the Holy Spirit to whip us into line. Peter missed it on several occasions. On one occasion, he said to Jesus, you're not going to wash my feet. But Peter had a good foundation. And when Jesus explained to him, unless I wash your feet, you have no part in me. Peter did not say, Jesus, what do you mean? Peter's foundation was right. As soon as Jesus tries to whip him into line, he said, not just my feet alone, Master, but my head and everything. Hallelujah. Peter missed it when Jesus was about to be crucified. He was telling Jesus, said, Master, if everybody forsake you, <laughs> I'll be with you. And to even show his zeal for what he was saying, when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter took his sword and cut off somebody's ear. At some point, the pressure of life was heavy upon him. Jesus said, before the cock crowed thrice, Peter, you will deny me. Peter said, no, Jesus, you don't know me. <laughs> but he had a good foundation. Peter's foundation was very good. So when the pressure came, 
He made a mistake, but he didn't live in the mistake. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. When the cock crowed and Peter, Jesus looked at him, the same Peter that cut off somebody's ears, all of a sudden was swearing that he doesn't know Jesus. He wasn't even saying he doesn't know Jesus, so, so it's two sins together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. It's two sins in one. The first one is that he denied Jesus. The second one is that he swore on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> because he was under pressure. All of us do get into pressure. Hallelujah. Yes. But when Jesus just looked at him, Jesus didn't even tell him anything. The Bible says when Jesus broke God broke and Jesus looked at him, only the master's look was enough for him. And then he repented and cried. But then he didn't lose his whole place because God had already made him the leader of the church. Because of that level of repentance, the Bible says he wept bitterly. So it's not that kind of repentance that we put our pocket, our hands in the pocket and say, well, Jesus, you know, this life, this mother is too cold. So the sister that had just entered into that house with Jesus, you know how it is. And then that was not the repentance. And Peter did not deny Jesus again. He went and said, no. But then how can we make sure that this benefits of foundation are keeping it? How can we maintain this, 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 this uh, foundation, keep it solid, keep it going? Because we have to pray. Of course we have to fast. I read something recently which made me to laugh. Sometimes some people have a way of communicating very powerful things in a, in a lighter mood. He said somebody was fasting. He said some people, when they want to fast, they want to start fasting 8 o'clock in the morning, they go and open the fridge. They look at it and they walk away. The next one hour, they open the fridge again. So the person was saying, You know, we're going to open that fridge. What are you looking for in the fridge? Are you looking for frozen Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah? <laughs> How come before 12 o'clock you have opened the fridge several times? I said, I said, let me see if the, fro if the frozen book of Matthew is in this fridge. <laughs> or you go to the cooker, you just open it. I said, you are looking for grill and uh, look, book of look in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cooker. But brother, we have to fast though. As long as there are no medical conditions that prevents us from fasting, what do we say? There's no fasting, has, there's no circumventing. And while we are fasting, we'll put a camera in your home to monitor how many times you open the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you see that? The kind of Christianity, Christians who want to raise from here, my brethren, are the ones that really want to stand on their feet for Christ. Whether our pastor is there, whether our brethren are there or not, what we see here in the church is what we see on the road. How many of us think it's a good thing? That what we see here, as you see me now in this pulpit, you see me in the shopping center, the same pastor. You see me, you put the camera in my home, the same pastor. And even when you don't say, well, don't go for pastor. <laughs> if you put the camera in your home, the same thing. If you put the camera in your place of work, the same thing. Brethren, I want to finish here. 
I listened to somebody, a message that a policeman shared. I love that message. This policeman went to the mortuary. <clears throat> and when he got to the mortuary, he said he came to this mortuary this morning, and what he saw, um, raised a lot of questions in his mind. He said in this mortuary, you have doctors inside the mortuary. In this mortuary, you have accountants, teachers, lawyers, all kinds of people. They're all packed there. In this mortuary, some people in this mortuary, they have houses, not, well, not house, houses, cars, degrees. In this mortuary, some of them are elegant, beautiful, handsome people. Bosh! So he was there in the mortuary. And he said, but the man that used to have houses, he said, what the, this man now is in a small compartment. The man that used to fly first class, when they're flying, they give you a lost rush part of the plane. They spread the bed like that. It's not in the flight. When you go to the mortuaries like this, they push you in there. The popular pastor that used to pull two million crowd. When he gets into that mortuary, the crowd is not going within there. All in all. The successful footballer, Ronaldo Mbappe. Mercy. All the successful people that when they on the when they stand, crowd. But here in this mortuary, deserted all by themselves. Nobody, the crowd have left them. A lonely experience. But the man says something. He said he noticed that when people die, people lie a lot about them. To what they call man. But they pray that man. And you fought with the man yesterday, both of you have not reconciled when he died. And now he's dead. But a gallant man, very peaceful. The man drags over the night. Still people land. Deep all walks of wickedness. But then he said, the greatest lie you see is that when people pass away and then we begin to see tribute. Amazing person. What a beautiful woman. She's very peaceful. And maybe, maybe, <laughs> she's very peaceful. Anytime you want to talk to your husband, say, honey. He said, what a nice man. And the man had about 10 mistresses. One for Sokoto, the other one for Kano. He tell the wife, say, they go to Netherlands. Hey. Not the Netherlands, he go. He go see a girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. And that girlfriend with the cry, say, what a man. The man, when they say, when they cry, they say, what a good man. That's somebody husband. But then the man said, so even if it's not just, even if, even if this was in all this thing, they say, oh, they said, they, 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 they said, said that thing again. So whether you're a doctor, or you're a professor, or you're a bishop, or even pope, he said, those titles, once anybody pass away, all those titles are stripped away. All of us have one common title. What is that title? Let this and this and that. Professorship title ripped and put on the bin. Honorable MP ripped and put on the bin. That is when we pass away, all of us return to equality. The only title anybody that passes away, all of us have what? The late Jogu, the late Maria, the late Silas. 
He said, but if it was just that alone. He said, well, what worries him really is that all this accolade that people are giving. He said, how I wish is the same accolade that the person is receiving in heaven. So all this accolade, what a great bishop, what a great impact. So it could be possible that while all this accolade is happening, this person is gnashing their teeth in hell. So the things that you and I should have said to the person who are not there to rescue the person, sometimes we become psychopaths. We think because he's a boss. We think because he's an archbishop. He is doing the wrong thing, and we can't find him to save his soul. Now he's dead, and we're still continuing with our psychopathy. What a great man of impact! It doesn't matter at that point because he is now being impacted by the devil in hell. We have to redeem the time in yes. this again. Yes. There is one, one liability we have. There is one debt everybody has, you and I, all of us, and that debt that we have is debt. Hmm. We're owing it. And it's going to come one day. Whether we like it or not, it's not a question of, mm, or, ah, but I won't accept it. No, but, no. So then in there, I will have to say, Lord, whatever happens, let me make my words, let me go to heaven. But if my words will take me to hell, let my words go, let me make heaven. If that degree or that profession, do you know so many people have compromised their holiness because they want to progress in career? Women have slept with their bosses or directors because they want to make progression. The same thing with men. They have slept with their women bosses because they want to progress. The more dangerous ones, some people have joined some occult group because they thought if they get to that circle, they will get support for them to climb. But the Bible says, when God opens a door, no man can shut. The devil is a liar. The reason why people are selling their soul is because of impatience. Impatience is not fruit of the spirit. Patience is fruit of the spirit. We're going to end here because of time. And so, brethren, as we speak today, there has to be an action point for everybody. As I'm going home today, I'm going to examine myself. The fact that I'm speaking here does not mean that I'm in heaven already. Until I reach my goal, I will never take my eyes off Jesus. Ladies, after preaching this gospel, me too, I begin to say how I know. God forbid, but in God help me. We have to go home. Please, no disrespect. Some of us are married to our jobs. I am a hard worker. I like to work hard. But please, let the work not take the place of Jesus. Let's not be married to our jobs. Let's work hard. 
But let's give Jesus rule as well. To Ecclesiastes on our couple's night. So when two lie together, they generate hate. Don't let the devil deceive us in our marriages. The husband is going to the other side, the woman is going to the other side. Then the devil becomes the boss in the middle. God forbid. What that's what it is. If the man is going that way, the woman is going that way, who do you think stays in the middle? It's the devil. The devil. Push the woman further, push the woman further. The devil doesn't drink tea because he doesn't like good things. He takes Shako, drink Shako. Cross his neck. Lord, pour oil of marriages in the name of Jesus. Restore homes in the name of Jesus. Let peace return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Juju is not a good thing. If we are wearing rings, and our rings have some spiritual connotation, before it becomes too late, those rings will take us to hell. Unless we take off those rings if they have spiritual connotation, and take it away and throw it away, both in church here and outside of church. My brethren, I'm saying this thing because I want to say my neck. What kind of rings are we wearing? Why are we wearing those rings? Jesus is enough for me. Jesus should be known for you. that have some type of spiritual connotation, brethren, crush it. If you don't know what to do, it's silent. Let's take the one who go eat for McDonald's next weekend. Take the church out to McDonald's with it. In our homes, in our homes that does not fully promote Christ. I owe us the duty. It is my duty to say it. Listen, on that day, I go, I go to hell because of it. Anything that the parents do what Take it away. <laughs> he that is stealing, steal no more. Fornication and adultery, and I will end here. It will surprise you in the church, in the body of Christ, the level of immorality that exists in the church. There was a survey that happened in the church in America, Pentecostal church, Pentecostal church. So they do the, the survey, a questionnaire, and they said, people should think yes or no, if they think it's okay for a man to sleep with a woman who is not his wife, or for a woman to sleep with a man who is not her husband. And over 80 something percent of the church said there is nothing wrong for a man and a woman to sleep even though they are not married. And they say, why? He says, it's their body. Aha. Not because of Pentecostal church. So the people that is thinking to say, it's okay, nothing wrong. Maybe they are sleeping and committing adultery against their relationship. That is their understanding. So I don't know how that understanding came, whether it's one of my thoughts or the way of the 
understood it or what they choose to hear. What I'm hearing these days, everybody is not here. I think what they hear now is because that, uh, I don't want to start mentioning them. People are saying that uh, 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 traditional this, the traditional religion was there before they bring the Bible. And it is spreading very wide. People will leave the goods they are supposed to be pursuing, which is to get freedom from certain part of Nigerian people. And now they are focusing it on what? On the Nanadi. Before we try and buy that is what we are hearing. Or the Nanamese traditional faith existed before the Bible came. They robbed us. They robbed us. And then I ask them the question. The people that are talking this is, they say, if you ask them, they say they are from Israel, they are the Jewish people. Then you ask them, the Jewish people, you say we are from Jewish people, or oh, other than them, they are very reserved. Because that is our origin. We are from there, we are from, we are from Israel. Sorry, I'm your father. The ordinary, when we say we deserve the Hebrews, originally were from Israel. So if you bring the Jewish man that cannot go in the land, you could say, is this their God? So on one hand, we say we are from the Jewish people, on the other hand, we will accept their God. And we agree that we are from them. May God help you and in the name of Jesus. Let's get first for our faith as we end. The devil is awake this last time. You go out, you want to preach the gospel, they say, this thing is, is, is man-made. Man-made? How can man-made be speaking? Power is coming from what you are speaking because of the faith in the word you are speaking, and we say it's man-made. Well, this Bible you see, This black and white is man-made. It's written by man, but there is a spirit behind it. Amen. It is the spirit that is the deal. Who says man-made? It's not man-made. There's more to it. Let's finish it. Precious Father, we thank you. We worship you, we honor you. Somebody just lift up your voice, prayer one prayer. Lord, whatever happens, please let my foundation not be faulty. I don't want to be found wanting on the last day. Just one prayer and we're done. Those of us online pray. Those of us here at church pray. We need to go home today and examine ourselves. I need to go home today and ask Jesus to change me. I need to go home today and remove everything that does not promote Christ around me. I need to go home today and let things turn around for me. Lift up your voice and talk to Jesus. Everything spot or wrinkle. I don't want it. When I'm saying things like this, it looks so simple, but that is power. If you want power, if you want progress, if you want prosperity, that is the secret. I will not tell you lies. I will not deceive you. I will not mislead you. If Jesus came to preach here, that is what he will tell you. Jesus is our source. If you want the power, if you want the anointing, if you want the prosperity, then every spot of wrinkle must go. If the spot and wrinkle goes, it opens door to other things to come. Spots and wrinkles, when you take them away, then the devil is crushed forever. Talk to Jesus today. Every spot, every wrinkle in my life, everything that defiles, Lord, take them away, take them away, take them away, take them away, take them away. Those of us on life pray. Those of us at church pray. I don't want spots. I don't want wrinkle. Take them away. Take them away. Take them away. Take them away. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I agree with us right now? Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I have preached your word. 
And because I have released your word, O oh God, let your word begin to find expression in the lives of your people. But Lord, having spoken your word the way it should be spoken, I go on my knees and I say, Lord, because of grace, because of mercy, because of compassion, whatever be your children's heart desires, whatever be their desires, whatever be their desires, according to the word of God, according to the will of God, this week, Lord, let them receive, 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 let them receive. the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. Amen. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful people of the living God, we must end here, but really thank you so much. You know how much I love you. How many of us know I love us so much? How many of us know I am speaking like this because of the love I have for us? Amen. You will not be sitting in the name of Jesus. Yeah. On that last day, I will see you in heaven. I will say, high five, TJ. Come on, somebody give high five. Say, I will see you and I will give you a high five in heaven. High five in heaven. Let's give ourselves high five already and we'll get ready for heaven. High five in heaven. I will see you and I will give you a high five in heaven. Come on, come on, come on. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. High five in heaven, high five in heaven. I'm enjoy. I'm going to enjoy. Don't high five. Don't let them marry from there. High five in heaven. High, oh, for the glorious high five in heaven. Oh, that me, high five in heaven. Hey, high five in heaven. So that when you high five in heaven, all of us will get up. Are you sitting there? You're not going to show the high five in heaven. Stop. My, my, my desk in high five in heaven. Oh, high five in heaven, high five in heaven. Oh, this bishop, you high five in heaven. God bless you. High five in heaven, high five in heaven, high five in heaven, high five in heaven. Hallelujah. High five in heaven, high five in heaven. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voice and begin to thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him the praise, 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 give him the praise. Da papa da bandu son coro no 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 sempre na la da luz. Gira e gira e dá uma. Não, como que ele vai ser nevo? Nevo. I will change. Going forward, I will see Jesus. Say every sin in my life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forevermore. Amen. God bless everyone. God bless everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Leave your tithe and offering. If you have some, God will bless you as we come up with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, my Tamita. How are you? You okay? Oh. Have you got a spare bag that we can join? Can you just like it to the job? Hello, sir.
Video Snake. Snake.